unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. Let us proceed to facilitate communications. Recitation. And bring about the termination of hostilities. I yield, Master. It is as I heard through the Force. My life for yours. You must. The alternative is only another death. And I would rather die by your hands. to offer you. Your strength is superior. It is as I felt. Now I've seen everything. This woman, she's a Miraluka. I didn't think any were left in this part of the galaxy. Yeah, they're a pretty secretive race. I heard that some of their kind become Jedi, but a Sith? That's... well, that's a new one. I'm not sure how you'd go about killing one. It'd be tricky. Just mentioning it, she looks like she's suffered enough wounds already, even after the beating you gave her. I heard they had a colony on the Midrim, almost halfway between Onderon and Dantooine. Then, it wasn't there anymore. The whole planet was wiped out. Nothing left alive. No one knows why. Well, it was a planet of her people. If they see through the Force, who knows? If they're all Force-sensitive, maybe they all saw something through the Force that we can't see, and they left before it happened. Or maybe it killed them. They claim to see on a higher plane than we do. You know, the whole Force thing. Makes me nervous. Well, some of her wounds are pretty bad. Looks like she was already carrying her share of scars, though. I think she'll recover, yeah.
You spared her. I did not believe you would. I am more concerned about what she will do when she recovers. Just be careful. Not everyone can be saved. Your presence is coming to a close, and you will need to increase your training. You are ready. Your training must increase, and there are higher mysteries you must learn. But only you must know the path you will take. I cannot choose it for you. Is it battle that stirs you? To meet an enemy blade upon blade? Such is the way of the greatest of Jedi warriors, the Weapon Masters. Or perhaps it is investigating the mysteries of the galaxy, seeking out injustice and harm, and bringing it into the light. Such is the way of the Jedi Watchman in the time of Ulik Keldroma and Exar Kun. Or perhaps your way lies upon the ancient mysteries, and to teach others the ways of the Force, as I have, the way of the Jedi Masters. It is not some great test you require to be what you strive to be. It is only your decision to find that path that matters. From here on, you guide your destiny. But in order to take the next steps, you must face your past and put it to rest. My life for yours. I am able to serve. If we enter battle, I will fight and die alongside you. My flesh is healed, if that's the answer you seek. The scars are many and the cause is equally so. It is of no importance. I... felt you you through the force. It was like a sound at the edge of hearing. And when I heard it, I found I could not ignore it. I serve my master. I am an emissary, a scout. My master was aware of a disturbance in the force, but was unaware of its nature, of you. The disturbance is not something one feels from a living thing. There is little my master does not know. And that you eluded his sight for so long is significant. But I do not know why. You cannot. His vessel roams the borders of known space. And even I do not know where he travels. Until he calls for me. Even if I could lead you to my master. I cannot permit you to find him until you are ready. If I bring you before my master, untested, without your potential realized, then you will be lost to me, and I cannot allow that to happen. It would be as if one brought fire to a paradise valley, shattered a cavern of rare crystal, or blinded a painter. I cannot. I will not. I would die first and gladly to preserve you untouched, unharmed. Now that I have found you, I cannot sacrifice what I have found. You will meet my master. It is inevitable. I have 
you've seen it. And when you stand before him and realize what you face, you must be prepared. Until then, I must protect you, help you, until you are ready. There's a, a greatness in you. A greatness that does not stem from the Force. It stems from who you are. And if my master does not understand you, cannot see you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. But if you seek to survive, then you must understand why this is so. There is much I see my master cannot. I fear it is because of my nature, the nature of my race. My people spend their lives seeing the galaxy, the energy streaming off stars, the growth of life, all things touched by the Force. It is not a subject which I have spoken of since its destruction. The planet was not destroyed. It remains. It orbits, dead in space. But nothing lives on its surface. It echoes, but there's no one left to hear it. I am not certain I did. I was there when the planet died. To see everything around you extinguished, it was as if I was blinded. It was as if the Force had been bled from the world. I imagine there are worse deaths, worse pain. But if there are, I do not know them. I was the only living thing remaining on the planet of Qatar. And my life, my agony, was a flicker in the darkness that was the planet. All that I had been connected to had been severed. Yes, but it was not survival. I still wonder what would have happened if I had died with the others. If perhaps there would have been some way to hide my presence from the galaxy. If only I had not felt that pain, that loss, as strongly as I did. But it could not be done. When the life was bled from the planet, and yet somehow I remained, my master came for me. He walked upon the surface of my dead world, and there, lying in the bodies of my race, he took me for his own, and he made me see. And for the first time, I saw the galaxy, and I wished to die. To this galaxy, my world, absent the currents and spectrums of the Force, was nothing but crude matter, rock, flesh, emptiness. He showed the flickering of life on other planets, the mass of beings that swarmed through the empty places of the galaxy. To see such creatures, disconnected from themselves, their world, their place in it, unable to see the currents and how they affected everything around them. He showed me to make me believe in his cause. He convinced me the galaxy, all life, must die. He fed upon its ugliness, its screaming, and in its place, he left silence. And where there was chaos, he brought stillness and order. It was not a thing done with machines or weapons. The force is far more terrible and it touches more lives than any machine can hope to slay. For everyone that feels the Force, strongly, deeply, each one feels and perceives it in their own way. You have strengths, whether you know it or not. And my master has his. His power is great, and it comes from hunger. He is a wound in the Force, 
more presence than flesh. And in his wake, life dies, sacrificing itself to his hunger. And those who feel the Force strongly are beacons to his hunger. My people, my planet, would have been attacked in time. It was inevitable. Yet we could do nothing about it. The Jedi, the last council of the Jedi, came to our world to meet in secret. They hoped that perhaps among our people, they could achieve the clarity to see what was striking them from the darkness of the galaxy. They succeeded, but only in bringing him from the outer regions. And Qatar, with my kind, with the Jedi upon its surface, could no longer be ignored. And my people died, and the Jedi died, and there was no one left, only me. They hoped to see the threat that had been stalking them, and they did. But they were unprepared for the magnitude of the threat. He cannot deny his hunger for long, and any gathering of Jedi is something he cannot long resist. And now that the Jedi are vanishing, I do not know what will happen. Perhaps he will grow strong enough to eradicate all life, merely with his presence. I do not understand what you mean. I will answer what I can, but my answers may prove useless to you. It is not a subject which I have spoken of since... I've heard tales of Malachor. It is said that many of my people felt the end of the Mandalorian Wars from across the galaxy. But do not mistake me. I did not mean to draw comparisons between Qatar and Malachor. My homeworld still exists. It is intact. I will answer what I can. I am not familiar with the place you speak of. My master has not entered Republic space for some time, but there are others who may move more freely, who may have been responsible for such an act of destruction. There are many factions within the Sith, all seeking to take what little remains in the wake of the Jedi Civil War. Where one moves, it is not always known to the others. But their purpose is the same. The death of all Jedi. Everywhere. They believe you are the last of the Jedi, and their hatred of the Jedi unites them. All their eyes are upon you, and it is a terrible, quiet darkness that pursues you. I will answer what I can. My master did not cause the end of the planet you speak of. There are many factions within the Sith, all seeking to take what the... Where one moves, it is not a... They believe... I will answer what I can. My people once had the power to perceive events, to see through the Force. That sight may manifest itself in many ways, and at times, I may affect the abilities of others to see as well. My sight has been damaged. What I have taught you, it is not the full extent of the perceptions of my people. My master, when he showed me my world, showed it to me as it is. It hurt. And since that moment, it has been difficult to perceive the Force as I once did. But after traveling with you, I feel that perhaps there was a gift in it, hidden beneath the pain. Only when one suffers, 
do certain truths become evident, both of the galaxy and of the self. And I feel you are an example of this. Forgive me, but before you go, I must ask. Why do you do this? Why do you seek to help me? Teach me? You must not do this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. So you say, but it is not something I have observed or seen. I remember little of my homeworld before I entered my master's service. It is not as it was. There is little left of such memories, or the planet itself. Very well. Perhaps we shall speak more of this at another time. But know this, I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. There is something I have observed, and now I feel I must say it. I have found your presence to be inspiring. With your growth in the Force, you seem to have found your center. And throughout the dangers we face, you remain calm and focused. I understand now why others followed you to war. Perhaps that is what leadership is. And it is something I have seen in only a few during my travels. In any event, it has been some time since I traveled with a Jedi, nor one so firmly upon the path. I wanted to thank you. I fear the stories that were spoken of you have misrepresented you. And if I have the opportunity, I shall reverse them whenever they arise. Very well. Then I shall keep my favorable opinions to myself. That is hardly surprising. What do you wish to know? You are correct. I am afraid I have not been entirely open with you concerning my past. If I look familiar, it is because we have met before, at the Enclave on Dantooine, many years ago. As on Coruscant, Force-sensitive children are taken to Dantooine as well, though it is done rarely and only with those they believe are destined to become Jedi Knights. It is the secret nature of the place. If you are not chosen by a master when you have come of age, however, then the path of the Jedi is denied to you. I met you on Dantooine, long ago, briefly. You taught us the ways of combat, how to hear music within the movements of a lightsaber blade. It is difficult to explain the difference between you and Master Vruk, but I think it is because he was knowledgeable, but not a leader, not a mentor. You were different, we could all feel it, and I knew that if I were to have a master, I would want it to be you. And then you went to war. Many Jedi went to war, and the Jedi Masters proclaimed that you were Jedi no longer. Atrus, the mistress of the Archives, was first among them. I knew at that moment that if you would no longer be a Jedi, then you must be correct. I realized I did not want to be a Jedi. Instead, I wished to follow your path, and in any event, there was no one to train me even if I wished it. They all went to war as I grew past the age of acceptance. It is possible to forget the Force, you know. If you have not felt it strongly enough, then there is little to miss. But I never felt the Force as strongly as I did when I was with you. And so I decided to serve the Republic, study the Jedi teachings, gather them perhaps. It was important to me to understand the Jedi now that they were gone. I felt some part of you should be preserved, so that your lessons would not be lost.
Perhaps. I still harbor doubts about the path I walked. I am on a diplomatic mission. I am one of several tasked with attempting to contact any remaining Jedi and convince them to return to the Republic. I know something of the Jedi. I have studied them for a good portion of my life, and now that they are gone, such studies are even more important. I do not think it is a matter of luck or chance, only my own inability to find them. While the Enclave trained me for many things, I am afraid that the life of a bounty hunter was not among them. I suspect my turning away from the Force is also a hindrance in such cases. I imagine the Jedi would be easier to find if I still maintained my connections to the Force. No. It is something of a mystery why they would exile themselves as they have. It is not the way of the Jedi to vanish in such a way. Especially when the Republic is in need of them. I fear that there is something else at work. Something that we cannot see. Then again, perhaps the Jedi are hiding simply because so many people hate them these days. It is difficult sometimes for the Jedi to see such things, since much of it is rooted in human nature, and the Jedi are often removed from events of daily life, insulated. But the reason the Jedi Civil War was named such was because few in the galaxy can recognize the difference between the Sith and the Jedi. To them, they are both Jedi, with different philosophies. That is hardly surprising. What do you wish to know? It is not time, if there ever is a time. I am on a diplomatic mission. I am one of several tasked with attempting to contact any remaining Jedi and convince them to return to the Republic. You have? Where have they gone? And why? Like you? Curious. It is unlike the Jedi to vanish when the Republic is in need of them, and the Republic is more in need of them now than ever. What was that? Do you know? Perhaps the Sith have learned from Malak's defeat and have chosen a different tactic. It is like them to strike from the shadows. This has Revan's mark in things. Yes, but there is much of Revan's legacy that was not undone in the Jedi Civil War. I suspect these assassins are one of them. Master Vandar spoke of these assassins in the Council Chambers. They were used before large assaults on planets and Jedi to weaken them. befriended the seer. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. The Sith carry the battle to you, and you spare them. And as we travel, the empty places of this ship are filled. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. If you take her on as a servant, know that the Sith meet their end at the hands of their apprentices. It is not something I would wish to happen to you. This one you have saved 
has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty. Perhaps I am not convinced. Did he? And what do you make of that? The Mandalorians were right to respect you on the field of battle. The Jedi are gone, vanished. Now, an entire planet of Force sensitives wiped clean of life. And now this slice of the galaxy is blind. It is no coincidence. The two events are tied. I fear you are right. And I fear it may prove more than that. War is a hunger. And there are spirits in the galaxy whose hunger is never satisfied. But there is little to be done about it now. Watch the seer carefully, she may reveal more. Ask, and I will answer. That crystal is bonded to you. Through you, it acquires its character and strength. And through it, your power is enhanced. Most interesting. Your crystal does not perfectly reflect your current self. Remove it from your lightsaber, then ask me about it again. Is there something else you wished? He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the dark lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her and perhaps a reason that she survived when the rest of her people and the Jedi did not. Entertain what illusions you will. I am too tired to argue them with you. One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do, as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the Blinded One. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Entertain what illusions you will. It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life, the Force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. Power? Do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things. And like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. 
no one again must experience and learn what her master did. As much as one may use the force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by traveling it, the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the force than a living thing. Force sensitives and worlds rich in the force draw him. The Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. But Katar called out as a beacon to him and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith or its teachings or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. Perhaps he is bound to her, as I am bound to you. If so, there may be a death served by hers. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Ask, and I will answer. She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper past her breathing. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. Diagnostic. 
HK-47 activated. Running checks through primary systems. Assessment. It appears I have suffered considerable damage and dismemberment. I can feel all the cracks in my motivators. And my central control cluster seems to have taken several repeated blaster shots at close range. How crude. Answer. I do not know, Master. It is curious that I was here. Although this place does seem familiar. Extrapolation. Perhaps someone was already in the process of rebuilding me. It may be I was needed for some task. Answer. If by okay, you mean the loss of almost all my existing assassination protocols, then no, I am not okay. Furthermore, I seem to have no discretionary control over my vocabulator, causing me to reveal my true function as an assassin droid of unrivaled sophistication. Answer. It seems you would know more than I. My memory centers are experiencing some setbacks. Reflection. Of course, for some reason, that does not alarm me. I suspect I have suffered such repeated memory failures before. Still, the loss of my higher combat and assassination protocols is shameful and degrading. Answer. Oh, that is impossible, Master. If I were out to kill you, we would not be speaking. And regardless, I am a unique model. Why to think that there would be other versions of me would be unacceptable. Statement. Master, I must inform you that your attempts at humor are wasted on a droid such as I. As I have expressed, I am unique. Resignation. Very well, Master. If you persist in your attempts at humor, I shall indulge you. Let me check the ship's records, and we will settle this matter once and for all. Conclusion. You speak the truth. This discovery is also causing me some degree of anger and humiliation. Mockery. Am I all right? Oh, yes, Master. Why, I am fine. Statement. I mean, I've only just been reactivated, only to find that there are substandard duplicates of me running all over the galaxy, corroding my good name. But if they are in fact hunting you, then I look forward to the opportunity to meet these units and educate them in proper assassination protocols. Conclusion. So it seems I need you, for the time being. Recitation. Yes, as I said, I am an assassin droid. It is my primary function to burn holes through meat bags that you wish removed from the galaxy. Master, oh how I hate that term. Answer, no, Master. <laughs> ah, I said it again. Answer, yes, master. Answer, yes, master. HK-47 is ready to serve. Thank <laughs> you.